Hey guys, welcome to the Lily Knits YouTube channel. My name is Alnar and I am the creator behind Lily Knits. This channel is where I post videos to help you guys with my free patterns, which you can find on the Lily Knits website. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the stitch pattern that I use to create the everyday shawl. You can get this pattern for free from my website, www.lilyknits.com. I've included the link in the video description below as well to help you find it. Before we get started, I'd like to ask that if you enjoy my free patterns and tutorials that you consider supporting me and the Lily Knits website by visiting the Lily Knits Ravelry or Etsy stores and purchasing one of my for sale patterns. When you purchase a pattern, you will be emailed an easy to read, beautifully formatted printable PDF file. Every pattern that I create is designed to not only be beautiful, but also fun and easy to follow. By purchasing one of my patterns, you enable me to continue to provide inspiration and value to you guys through my free patterns and tips on the website. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first step in creating this triangular shawl is to create a magic loop. If you don't know what a magic loop is, it's basically a loop that you can crochet your stitches into and then you can pull it tight to secure it. Um, and I'll show you how it works in this part of the tutorial. So you take your yarn and you wrap it around your first two fingers twice, like so. And then, so you can see there's two loops around your fingers. And then you take your hook and you insert it underneath the yarn and you pull the first loop underneath the second loop and up. So I'll show you again. So you wrap your yarn around your fingers twice like that. And then I just hold it in between these two fingers. And then I insert my hook underneath both loops and I pull it up. I pull the first one up underneath the second, like so. And then we have our magic loop. So now in my magic loop, I'm going to chain two. It's a little awkward to work with at first, but you get the hang of it after a while. And this chain two counts as my first half double crochet. And then I work two more half double crochets so that I have three half Oh, <laughs> three half double crochets. So that's one. So that's my first, so my turning chain is one. And then this is my second and then one more. So this counts as three half double crochets. And then I chain one and then work three more half double crochets into my magic loop. One two, three. So it looks like this. So now I'm going to pull my magic loop tight by just yanking on this uh, thread at the very beginning and you can see how it can, it's pretty cool. It just secures the, the loop nice and snug. And this is row one. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to see, but there's three half double crochets separated by a chain on each side. So this is like a little triangle. It kind of looks like a half circle, but it's like, as you keep building, it'll look more triangular. Okay, so now I'm at the end of row one, and to begin row two, we turn our work and chain two. And this chain two actually counts as our first half double crochet of the row. And we work one more half double crochet in the first stitch. So this counts as two half double crochets in the first stitch to increase and build our shawl. And now I work one half double crochet in the next stitch. And one half double crochet in the stitch after that. So you can see so far we have a total of four half double crochets on, on this side of our triangle. Um, and because uh, a turning chain actually counts as one half double crochet. And that is so important. Don't forget that because when we come back around, we don't want to skip that turning chain for our last stitches. So now we're at our chain one space. And in the chain one space, we work one half double crochet chain one 
and then work one more half double crochet. And we're working it in the space, so not in the actual stitch, which is much easier than working in the stitch. So it makes like a little, a little V in that space. So you'll see as you keep building, it'll look like you'll have um, a bunch of little V's going up the middle of your triangle. And now when I'm working, I just like to sometimes count to make sure that I've created enough uh, increases on each side and didn't make a mistake or forget anything. So you can make sure and count one, two, three, four, five half double crochets on this side and then a chain one. And then this is our first half double crochet on the other side of our triangle. And then we work a half double crochet in our next stitch. So we have two and then a half double crochet in the stitch after that. And at the beginning, these look a little tight, but they'll get um, easier to work into as you keep going. So we have three and then our turning chain or our beginning uh, chain two from our row one is right here. So it's, I'll bring it closer to the camera. So we want to work two half double crochets in that last uh, stitch there. So you just have to like force your loop right into it. It's or sorry your hook right into it. It's a little a little tricky if you did it tight, but you'll get it in there. It's not that bad. So one and then two. So that's our increase at the end. So you can see it's starting to look more triangular at the end of row two. And um, we can begin row three now. So for row three we chain two and turn our work, or we turn our work and chain two. And then we pretty much do what we did for row two. And we continue this actually for rows uh, three to five. So three more rows of this. So we go, uh, so our, our turning chain is our first half double crochet. And then we work one half double crochet into the first stitch to make it uh, increase so this is actually like two half double crochets and then we work half double crochets all the way until we reach our middle point which is our chain one space so you're increasing by two on each side of this triangle if you haven't noticed so far one one at the each end and then in the middle um, so I've worked all the way up to my turning chain and um, I can just count to make sure I should have six now. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then when I work my uh, half double into the chain one space, chain one, and then half double again, I will have a total of seven. So it went from five to seven. So you can see I've increased by two on this side and I'm gonna do the same thing going back down the other side. So I just, um, I have done my uh, half double chain one, half double in my chain one space, and now I'm going to half double all the way back down in each stitch. And now I'm at my turning chain. Make sure you don't forget that turning chain at the end because that's your last, that's technically your last a half double crochet. So it's usually a little tight, but you can get your hook into it. The first one is a little bit harder and the second one usually goes in much easier. So you can see I've made space now. So I work my first half double and my second half double. And that's the end of row three. So you repeat row three two more times for rows four and five, and then I will show you how to do row six. At the end of row five, your work should look like this, and you can already see a mini shawl starting to form. And now I'm going to begin row six to show you how to do the what I would say is the most complicated part of this shawl, but it's really it's really pretty easy too. So I've created um, sorry I've chained two 
and that counts as my first half double crochet and now I'm going to work a cluster stitch into the first stitch so it will look like one half double crochet and then a cluster in the stitch so to create my cluster um, and if you don't know what a cluster is it's basically a bunch of half completed stitches uh, in one stitch and then they're all tied together at the end. So I'll demonstrate the cluster stitch So you yarn over your hook and then insert your hook into the first stitch and pull up a loop and Then you yarn over and pull through two loops. So you have two loops remaining on your hook and then uh, we repeat this two more times so yarn over insert your hook into the stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two loops and then yarn over insert your hook into the stitch pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two loops so now i have four loops on my hook and i yarn over and pull my yarn through all four loops uh, securing them into a cluster stitch so that's a cluster stitch so now we alternate half double crochets and clusters all the way up the side of the triangle until we reach our half double crochet chain one space uh, that we create in the middle of the triangle. So I do a half double crochet and then another cluster. So I'll, I'll do this one a little slow again. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, insert your hook and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, insert your hook and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops and then at the end when you have four loops you yarn over and pull through all four and then half double in the next and then another cluster stitch so I'm gonna stop talking now <laughs> and just work them all the way up so I'm just alternating So I'm at my last stitch before the chain one space and you'll know that you did it right if your last stitch is a cluster. Um, if it's not, you may not, you may have put two clusters in a row or two half doubles in a row um, and thrown yourself off, which I have done a few times while creating the shawl. So don't feel bad if you do it too. Um, but it's just a good way to check yourself to make sure that it all lines up. So my last one will be a cluster stitch. And now, just like the previous rows, we will do a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in our chain one space. Okay, so now I'm gonna work down this side of the triangle by uh, working a cluster stitch in the next stitch because this, this, um, this counts as my first uh, half double crochet. So I work a cluster after it. And then a half double. And then a cluster. And I just keep continuing on all the way down the side. And it creates a really pretty design. So now I'm at my uh, turning chain from the previous row, which counts as our last stitch, and I work a cluster followed by a half double crochet to finish off this row. So it's a little tight with the cluster, but it's doable. You may wanna chain them loosely when you do your turning chains just to make it easy on yourself. 
So I've done a cluster in the turning chain and then don't forget you have to finish it off by working a half double in that same stitch. And then this is what it looks like at the end of row six. So this is actually the back of the shawl. I'm gonna turn it around and show you the front. So you can see it looks really pretty. And this is uh, basically all you need to know to create the shawl. You just repeat rows three through six uh, over and over again until your shawl is the desired length. And you can follow the pattern on my site if you wanna see how I, uh, where I switch colors in the creation process, but you can kind of just do whatever you want to, make it one color or alternate every few rows, switch it up, um, it's up to you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please subscribe to the Lily Knits YouTube channel and give the video a thumbs up. And don't forget that you can find this free pattern on the Lily Knits website. If you love the pattern and would like to purchase the printable PDF file, you can do so through the website or my Ravelry or Etsy stores. The PDF file is beautifully formatted and a great way to keep the pattern for your own records. Purchasing the PDF file also helps to support me to continue to provide you with free videos, tutorials, and patterns going forward.